Thank you, Mr. Banks. Mr. Mervan. Commander Marshall, I understand that providers in VA's community care network may not be equipped to provide evidence-based treatments for survivals, survivors of military sexual trauma, recognizing that women veterans, many of whom are MST survivors, are highly dependent on community care. I find this deeply concerning. In your view, is the Veterans Culturally Competent Care Act, critical legislation introduced by my colleague, Rep. Representative Blunt Rochester, sufficient to address these issues? Since it mandates brief, free, and online training and treatment in treating MST and other conditions. If not, what additional authorities or resources are needed to ensure MST survivors receive evidence based treatment regardless of where they receive their care? Well, Bill, if they were uh, subject to MST while on active duty, uh, that should have been the last time that happened to them. Should not happen in the VA system or any other system. But I'll let Ms. Elon respond. It is essential that uh, veterans, especially those that have experienced sexual trauma, have um, access to that state-of-the-art evidence-based treatment. It's very lengthy. It's, there's a training period that's required. And while the legislation um, definitely is a step in the right direction, we're going to need VA to also make incentives um, for those um, community network providers um, to want to take that training and to follow through um, on the mentoring process that, that goes with it. And that is truly the only way we're going to ensure that if a veteran has to seek care outside from a private um, community provider that's within the network, that they're going to get the state-of-the-art treatments that are available to them. So I think it's a great step, uh, first step, and we're going to have to work with VA to make sure that they can have they have the um, the providers that can provide that training as well and do the follow up and the mentoring. May I ask? You had mentioned just uh, from your level incentives. Can you drill down and kind of give me examples of what incentives you might be talking about? Well, I had asked VA that question actually, and where that's where I'm um, coming from on that because I said, what are you going to try to do if you can't mandate it? Um, it's not in their contracts uh, for community providers. And, um, you know, VA noted we're looking at some incentives, and we've um, agreed to do um, a roundtable discussion with VA to look at what could, some of those incentives could, um, could be to really move those providers. What could it be? Um, that's going to encourage them to want to take that route. So I think, you know, facilitating um, some discussion on that would be excellent in the, in the months ahead for this session. I thank you very much, and I yield back at this time.